So we're talking about conic sections. The word actually means cone cuts. So that's what the conic part is about. Cone and to section something is to cut it. So we're cutting cones. If you look at a cone, this is a mathematical cone. Um, it continues up um, infinitely in both directions. You've actually seen cones before, like if you had a light bulb and you had a circular shade around it, then the light would spread out in a cone like this. And we're talking about with conic sections, cutting a cone with a plane. So if we have a cone, say we cut either the upper or lower part with a completely flat plane here. This would be like the shape of the light on the ceiling, if you have a flat ceiling then the shape that you see, of course, is a circle. So that's actually a special case of something more general. As long as the ceiling doesn't have too much slope to it, then when where the light hits it then is going to give you a shape that closes up on itself. So this is an ellipse, and we'll see that the circle is really just a special case where the plane is completely flat, or the equation sort of reduces to, to a circle in a, in a special case. So. If, however, the plane is more steep, then it won't be able to close up. So there's kind of a there's a special case right here where you can see the tilt of the plane matches the tilt of the sides of the cone, and so it only cuts the top part. And the shape that you get there, you probably recognize that shape here as being a parabola. So we get the shape of a parabola. If we cut it even steeper, so we use a plane that's even steeper than that, steeper than the sides of the cone, then it's going to have to cut through both the upper and the lower part. And this creates a shape that's different from the parabola. It has two branches, and the thing to notice about it is that unlike the parabola, which keeps getting um, steeper and steeper as you go out, so the slope here gets steeper and steeper, if you cut a cone right down through the center, you'd see an X. And if you just barely miss the center, you'd see a shape that approaches an X. So if you stand back far enough from the cone, even if you just barely miss the center, if you stand back far enough, it will look as though it's making an X, even though at the last minute it's ditching out. So this shape is the hyperbola. So basically, we have ellipses, um, parabolas, and hyperbolas. And those are the ones that we want to to study. So the circle is just a special case of the ellipse, so that's sort of counted in there. All right, so our conic sections. Let's just review what you already know about circles. That's kind of a special case of the ellipse that you have uh, some knowledge about. Remember, the formula for a circle came from the distance formula, so it's a set of all points that are equidistant from some center point. In this form, the center is the origin, so we know this is a circle centered at the origin with radius r, but it's easy to shift that out so the center's at some other location. So here the center is at hk. Let's see an example from stuff you've seen before. Suppose you're asked to graph that. Now, it doesn't quite fit either of these forms because we have the 2x and the minus 6x. So we do know, however, that we can complete the square and put this in a form that we can recognize. Remember, if you have plane variable squared plus a constant times the variable, what you can do is cut this number in half and square it, and that will turn it into a perfect square. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so I need to add 1 to make a perfect square. Same, in the same way, um, if half of negative 6 is negative 3, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, so to make y squared minus 6y, oops, that's supposed to be a y, y squared minus 6y a perfect square, we would need to add 9. Now you can see I've added 1 and I've added 9 to both sides, so I should add them to this side as well. So we have 6, we add 1, and we add 9 to keep the equation in balance. The reason for doing that is now this becomes a perfect square. This is x plus 1 squared, and this is y minus 3 squared, and we have 16 on this side. Now we can see, since 16 is 4 squared, that this, this compares to that form, right? We know that the center is at hk. h is the number that's being subtracted from x. Y, k is the number that's being subtracted from y. So if you look at this, we have x plus 1. You could think of that as x minus minus 1. So h must be negative 1. Here, 3 is what's being subtracted from y, so k must be 3. 
and we can tell that the radius is 4. So we've got a, we look at this equation, we complete the square, and then we realize that we're talking about a circle of radius 4 centered at negative 1, 3. Some of the same techniques will apply to um, the, the general conic sections, the parabola. The parabola has basic form x squared equals 4py or y squared equals 4px. You're most familiar with this form, but you used to write it as y equals some constant times x squared. So we've moved the constant over to be on the y side in this case. This one isn't a function, y isn't a function of x, but x is a function of y. So this one will usually give you a parabola that opens up or opens down depending on the value of this constant. This one will give you a parabola that opens to the side either this way or that way depending on the value again of this constant which depends on the value of p. And their translation forms look like the forms that we saw for the circle, right? x minus h squared, and x minus h, and y minus k. The thing about a parabola is that only one of the variable is squared. So you can you can tell when you see when you have a parabola because only one variable will have um, will have a squared term. The ellipse, you can see this this really is a special case of a, of a circle. An ellipse has x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one, or um, could be that the bigger number is under the y. So the way the book sets it up, a is the bigger one. Now if both numbers were the same, you'd have something like x squared over a squared plus y squared over that same number squared equals 1. If you multiply both sides by x squared, you see you get the equation of a circle. So a circle is just a special case when the number under x squared is the same as the number under y squared when you have 1 on the other side. And then the third kind, the hyperbola, equations for hyperbolas either have uh, with one on one side, on, alone on one side, either the, the x squared is the positive term and there's a negative sign in front of the y squared, or the y squared is the positive term and there's a negative in front of the x squared. So the hyperbola and the ellipse look quite, quite the same. The difference is when the x squared and y squared are on the same side and the ellipse, they have the same sign, but when they're on the same side, in the hyperbola, they have different signs, and that's how you can recognize whether it's going to be an ellipse or an hyperbola. Now, both of these will have translation forms, just like the circle or like the parabola. So, for example, this ellipse, if it's if it's shifted, would have equation x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals one. It'll be exactly the same shape as 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 the original, it'd just be shifted so that instead of having the center at the origin, the center will be at hk. Same thing with the hyperbola. In general, you could have a number subtracted from x that determines the x-coordinate of the center of the hyperbola, and, an, and a number subtracted from y that determines the y-coordinate of the center of the hyperbola.